Hey there and welcome back. So I hope you don't mind. We have a little visitor today and if you were wondering what all the snorfling sniffling sounds were in my previous videos, this is the culprit. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about my sunglasses collection and as I mentioned in the crew video, I can't afford to purchase really nice sunglasses willy-nilly so I like to put a little bit of time and effort into researching the brand, researching the value for money, what warranties they offer before really pulling the trigger on sunglasses. So I hope going through my collection will give you more information about brands you're not too familiar with and also help guide any expensive sunglasses decisions that you might be making in the future. So let's get started. This pair of Prada Baroque sunglasses was the first pair I ever got in terms of luxury sunglasses. And of course, Prada needs no introduction. They are the luxury Italian fashion house that was founded in 1913. I think they really cemented their sunglasses legacy when they came out with the Baroque collection because I've seen so many knockoffs of the spiral leg and the butterfly filigree frame that they keep on producing it even to this day. You can get glasses similar to these guys or the spiral frame frame as I mentioned for $280 to $520 on the Prada website. If you're looking for this exact frame, you can search for it on third-party reseller sites or dead stock sites if you search Prada SPR28N. And I found just through preliminary research that you can get those for $208 to $312. So my experiences with these frames are pretty standard, I would say. I unfortunately didn't take very good care of them. They've held up pretty well, but the lenses are quite scratched and I did leave them in a very hot car once so the legs have melted so much so they no longer snugly fit my head. This is an easy fix. All you have to do is take it to an eyeglasses or eyewear store and have the sales associate conform it to your head again using like their special heating tools. However, I don't just trust anybody with my weirdo head shape and I have a trusted person that I cannot get to easily. But if you have any sunglasses fitting problems, just go to your optometrist or eyewear store and they should be able to sort you out. These sunglasses are not Asian fit and I did notice when my nose got especially sweaty or greasy on a hot summer day I would have to push the nose bridge up a lot but when the legs actually fit my head it was much better than the current state of them now so I like these glasses I still wear them I highly recommend them and if you're interested in a filigree baroque style pair you can still get them on prada.com Depending on where you purchase your glasses, you might get a limited warranty or a year-long warranty that covers accidents or manufacturing defects. The shop that I purchased from was essentially let you loose into the wild and whatever happens to these glasses happens. So just research all options before pulling the trigger on luxury sunglasses. The second pair of luxury sunglasses that I ever got are probably the most expensive in my little collection, and they are the Dita Heartbreakers. These guys retail for $550 and come in three additional colorways, tortoiseshell, clear, and gold. Right now, I have the black with the gold accents, and I absolutely love them. Whenever I wear these guys out, I get lots of compliments, and just feeling them, you can tell that they are quality. They are lightweight, they are well-made, and I really can't speak highly enough of Dita because the price tag is very expensive, but I do feel that if you're in the luxury game of sunglasses anyway, you won't come across glasses as well made as these. Dita was created in 1995 based in Los Angeles by two people, John Juniper and Jeff Solario, and they really wanted to focus on four things when it came to luxury eyewear. Style, fit, feel, and quality. To do this, they not only put their impressive design skills to good use, but they also sourced luxury acetate, high quality precious metals and took the whole eyeglasses manufacturing process to artisans in Japan that had over 50 years of experience. And just an example of how they do things is they roll their acetate in heated bamboo to polish it. And not only is that eco-friendly, but it gives the acetate a deeper, richer shine. And you can really see the difference in the tone and the hue of the black in the Dita acetate glass 
glosses versus any other luxury eyewear house. A single pair of Dita frames can take up to 320 steps to make and it's completed over the course of eight months. So you know you're getting something that many artisans have touched and it's not rushed in any way. I've had these frames for three to four years now. I love them, I cherish them. I make sure nothing touches the lenses to scratch them. But unfortunately, just due to life in general, I have dropped them on occasion and I have a small scratch on the front here of the beautiful black acetate frame. That hurts my soul very deeply, but of course, if you take care of your sunglasses, they will hold up for a very, very long time. My experiences with these sunglasses are probably biased because I love them. I get a lot of compliments on them. I think they are great quality. They are my ideal cat eye, but I will say they are not Asian fit. And one of the things that I did notice after wearing them for a while was that the solid metal nose pads here did leave like black and green marks on my face and i think that's just the metal reacting with my face oil and i the fact that i'm a very acidic person when i wear sterling silver jewelry it tarnishes really fast and i just feel that i'm stripping like stuff away from the nose pads and i can kind of tell that they're not as gold gold as they used to be i'm keeping an eye on that but that's happened after like four Four years of wear so it's something that I am mindful about but not too concerned about. Dita strongly recommends that you register your Dita product on their website. I have not done that. I've lost all paperwork for this pair of sunglasses so I have to be very careful in what I do but through that registration you get a limited warranty that covers manufacturing defects. If life happens and you scratch a lens or you break one of the legs off, etc., etc., you can bring it into the Dita store and they will help you for a fee. The third pair of sunglasses that I added to the collection was this pair from Gucci. And of course, like Prada, Gucci needs no introduction. They were founded in 1921 in Italy and have been killing it ever since. But these lenses I really liked because they didn't do the traditional cat eye that I fell in love with, but they still hid my uneven eyebrow problem. I got this design in the natural brown slash amber colorway. I didn't have a pair of sunglasses with super light lenses and this shape just really drew me to them. But these guys can be searched just round lens Gucci sunglasses. I've seen this style pop up in the most recent collection and in the past couple of years. So you can definitely still get this. They retail for $400 and they manufacture all of their frames in Japan. I'm not sure what the base metal is of this pair, but they do have 100% UV protection on their lenses. Like the Prada lenses, depending on where you get these guys, they will offer a limited warranty or maybe a year-long warranty for manufacturing defects or anything like that. Again, the place that I purchase these kind of releases you into the wild and anything that happens to these glasses is what happens to them, so be careful. My experiences with these glasses are pretty normal, I would say. They still involve quite a lot of like pushing up and stuff like that. And I think that's because the rubber nose pads just make it a little bit more difficult when you are super greasy and slick for the sunglasses to stick to your face. But it's also a huge departure for me because I'm not used to light lenses. So I used to kind of like people watch from behind like my super dark lenses because they couldn't see where your eyes are. I tried doing that in these glasses and obviously that was a bad idea because you can still see wh what I'm looking at. So if you want to people watch, get darker lenses. But otherwise these glasses I think really fit my face well. They are a departure from the shape that I have taken comfort in in a long time uh for a long time and i i really like these i highly recommend them when i do this they kind of slide down my nose but it's not noticeable my experience with these sunglasses are positive. They fit on my face better than the Prada lenses. I think the rubber nose pads definitely helps with adhesion. I also think the frame size, just since the lens is so large, if it does slip down my face, the bottom frame catches my cheek and it kind of holds it there in place in a jerry-rigged like, I'm not fitting on your nose, so I'm gonna pop on your cheek. 
It is annoying when it comes to cleaning because I always have to get all my oil, grease, and makeup off the bottom frame here, but I do notice that I don't have to shove the glasses up my nose as highly as I do the Pradas or any of uh, my other pairs. These guys are awesome. You can still get them officially from Gucci, but I also saw them on Gilt and The Real Real, so people are reselling this for a lower price. I really like these and I don't think I'm going to give them up anytime soon. But don't people watch with light lenses. I can't say that enough. So the next pair of luxury lenses I got were from Crew. I won't waste your time. I did a whole unboxing video on this, but for your too long didn't read, I love these lenses. They were the first pair of Asian fit glasses that I got that changed my life. They stay on my face. They're very sturdy. I've used them a lot. My sister, my mom, my dad were like, oh my God, Asian fit lenses. And I highly recommend these guys if you have a super low nose bridge like me, but check out that video that I linked for a more in-depth review. Hey, so things may look a little bit different right now, but that's because something exciting happened and my new light came. So it's fortuitous that this would happen during the sunglasses review because it's super bright and I hope you can't tell I'm like doing this the whole time. But the last thing that I want to talk to you about was something that I got recently in Hong Kong and that is, or they are, two pairs of eyewear from Gentle Monster. Gentle Monster is a brand that's well-loved by Eva Chen, Jen Im, Chriselle Lim, and that's because they are a Korean sunglasses brand that has taken the world by storm. And they recently collaborated with a really famous actress, Tilda Swinton, and of course, they had previous collaborations with Song of Style and other people. So I purchased two pairs of luxury eyewear from Gentle Monster, and that is because in Hong Kong, it wasn't like necessarily price tag cheaper, but the fact that I didn't have to pay shipping and the tax I also didn't have to pay made it worthwhile to purchase these frames. So when I said I don't buy luxury lenses willy-nilly, I don't, but this deal was almost too good to pass up. So a lot of the value I feel of Gentle Monster comes from the packaging. They package their products really well. They come with a Gentle Monster authenticity card because as they're becoming more and more popular, more and more fakes are popping up. But cutting into the chase, let me show you the exact pair of glasses I got from the Song of Style slash Gentle Monster collaboration. You can definitely tell the difference between the two lenses, even though they come in the very beautiful, very sturdy, gentle monster boxes. The Song of Style collaboration box has Song of Style emblazoned everywhere they possibly can have it. The glasses that I got from the Song of Style collaboration are these guys right here, and I'll pop them on so you can see. But they are the mirrored silver titanium lenses. They have two additional colorways, one in red and one in blue. I just loved this coloration the most because it's that like cool mirrored summer look. But the frames are made of titanium. These glasses themselves are made in Korea and they are really nice. They stick on my face really well. The rubberized pads really cling to my super low Asian nose bridge. And these were the sunglasses that I was wearing out the most in Hong Kong and back here. I've got a lot of compliments on them and I think they are definitely a worthwhile investment. One thing I will say is that I emailed Gentle Monster shortly after returning home because I thought my frames had broken already. If you look really closely here, you can see a jagged crack from the exterior of the lenses all the way back to where the nose pads are secured. And I just thought the frames were defective because I had like a symmetrical crack on both nose bridges. Maybe I like pushed them up in the wrong way. I wasn't sure, but I was really disappointed that like the quality of these wasn't akin to the price tag. So I sent an email to Gentle Monster and they responded, that's actually a manufacturing fixture. So your glasses are supposed to have that symmetrical crack or break in the frame. And that's because they do that to close the frame around the lens. And I'd never seen that before, even with like Dita's or any of my other sunglasses. So I was just unprepared for the little black crack here. So if you get these sunglasses, don't freak out like I did. They're supposed to be there. I haven't gotten an actual pair of seeing glasses since like the sixth grade and I thought it was high time to finally get a pair that represented my adult self. And when I saw these, I was like, 
I think these are the ones. They are just like a generic frame from Gentle Monster. They are kind of old school, but they have a pink and black marbled pattern on this white framing here. This pair of frames was manufactured in China, and I can kind of tell compared to all my other luxury frames, these feel not like cheaper but there's a difference to them that i can tell i think they're really comfortable wearing on my face they're not like as sturdy as for example the didas but they are high quality and i can see myself wearing them for a very long time this particular style is called blue moon and it comes in different colorways as well I think the Blue Moon pair of frames that I have here compare most closely to the crew lenses. Not that the crew lenses are bad in any way, but they just feel a little different. They feel a little bit sturdier. They're a little bit stiffer in terms of like the hinges and stuff like that. And the overall artistry is there, but it's not as fine or as delicate as the Dita lenses or the Gucci lenses. So that's just something that I was thinking about but I am absolutely in love with my two lenses and these will be probably making appearances in videos and Instagram photos more often. But that's it for the whole video. I hope it wasn't too rambly and wasn't too boring. If you have any questions about these sunglasses that I showed, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, you might like some of the others on my channel. And if you're feeling it, if you want to party with me, feel free to subscribe. You don't have to if you don't want to, but hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye. An expressive pair of sunglasses. Uh, gross. Prada, of course, needs no... <laughs> He's kicking me. So chronologically, these were the first luxury lenses that I have ever purchased. They are in the brown tortoise... <laughs> Siren, siren, where are you going?